I, I always lump Hart Crane and Sylvia Plath together. What the fuck are you talking about, Dan? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. Yes, Hart Crane was a homosexual, and yes, he killed himself. Sylvia Plath was a nut job, and yes, she killed herself. But that's not why I linked them. Uh, they both lived short lives. I think Crane 33, Plath 32. Uh, Crane killed himself when Plath was a toddler, so he came before. But these are probably the two most uh, dynamic language poets published in the English language in the last hundred years. And when I say language poet, I don't mean L-A-N, that language bullshit where, you know, I'm just going to jerk, jerk off onto a page. You know, that's Jackson Pollock gimmick art bullshit. And we can talk about Jackson Pollock some other time. But uh, um, Hart Crane did more with language, than, at least in the English language, than any other poet that comes to mind. Uh, uh, maybe you could argue John Donne. Maybe you could make a case for some of Gerard Mann, like Hopkins, is, but Hopkins isn't the words, it's, it's, it's the way he strings out uh, his sprung rhythm. But Hart Crane uh, had a density, uh, and, and his word, like he could use, you know, a polysyllabic three, four, five syllable word and make it poetic in, in the context. And it, was, it wasn't just showing off. It's not like one of these, you know, little young kids in an MFA class well, I'm going to be polydextrous. No, that's not the way, the way uh, Crane wrote. And Crane is far superior to both Eliot and Pound, who many people accuse him of imitating. Uh, there's, no, there's no way anyone with a brain could say Crane imitated. He is a language poet. He, he played with language. You can see, and I've seen books, and I've seen uh, writings, and I've seen also some television programs where they, you've seen multiple drafts of work. He was someone who was very keenly aware of, uh, of language. Sylvia Plath, uh, in a very different way, was as well. And Plath was also influential, for better or for worse, for the confessional stuff. She's most known for as a confessional poet, but she's really a language poet. Um, yeah, she's really a language poet. You look at some of you look at some of the the ways she describes things. The way she, the, I mean, she has this Sturm und Drang uh, vocabulary that she just drops into the most banal poems. Uh, you read uh, on one of the videos the one, one um, among the Narcissi uh, about Percy, an old man just uh, amongst the white uh, Narcissi or, or what whatever color they are, and uh, uh, it, it's it's a a really uh, interesting image. And uh, it's really well executed. And there are, there, are, there are a few dozen of her greatest poems have this. You know, the famous ones like Daddy and, uh, and whatnot, uh, you know, uh, uh, do have their merits. But a lot of these lesser known poems, like Among the Narcissi, are the, are the ones where you really see the language come into play. And like Hart Crane, uh, she's one of these writers that's non pareil She's had a lot of imitators from the, down to the Jory Grands and the Sharon Olds, but they had, don't have a vocabulary. They not only don't have a vocabulary, but the facility with the vocabulary. That's what they don't have. And she, like Hart Crane, uh, was able to twist it. You can say Cranian poetry. Yes, there was Stephen Crane who wrote some poems, but he's not really a poet, although he did have those interesting little lines. But when you say Cranian, or when you say Rilkean, or when you say Stevensian, Wallace Stevens, who I'll just mention in a, in a moment, or you say Plathian, you know what you're talking about. You know. It's like when I would write poems, for example, uh, I, would, I, would, I would have a poem and I'd be 97% of the way there, and I'd say, God damn, I'm just missing a word. And so, like going to a, a, a cupboard uh, with spices, you know, I'd say, well, let me open up Sylvia Plath. Now, I wasn't looking to plagiarize anything, but I'd look for a word, and I'd look at a word, and I'd say, oh, that, and if I, nine times out of ten, I'd know what the word meant, but it wouldn't have come to me, but I'd even look up a word and say, oh, that fits, fits the poem. It might have been not what I was actually looking for, but I'd say, well, that would make a good adjective. So I drop in that plath in adjective. Now I have to rewrite the poem because it has a darker tone. Or if I take something from Crane, a word from Crane, and, and drop it in. It might make what I was writing a love poem to some girl I was infatuated with at the time. 
but it makes it deeper. And now it's not just a poem about uh, uh, looking at, you know, the comeliness of a woman's ass, but it's a poem about uh, something deeper. It's something about maybe about the, the metrics or the mathematics of the universe. And that's what a great writer can do. And this is why poetry, as I said, is the highest of uh, writing and the highest of the art forms, because it has that magical quality that no other art can even come close to.